Howdy and welcome back. Today we got a cool pair of Stingray boots. I'm Oliver the Shoe Man. I'm gonna show you guys how we restore these, replacing the soles, heels, and bringing these Stingray boots back to life. These are, I'm trying to think of it, see, the, see if there's a brand on there, but, oh, there it is. These are Corral boots. Corral Stingrays, and he's got his, definitely his money's worth out of them. So we're gonna replace the soles, replace the welts, new heel bases, new heels, and just do a complete overhaul with JR Leather Soles. So these can last another 10, 15, 20 plus years. So let's get started. See how this footbed just falls apart? It's not footbed, the, the heel base. It's made out of like a compressed paper and cardboard thing. So when you take it off, it just falls apart like that. And sometimes when you're wearing them and your boots get wet, it'll weaken that material and then your heel will fall off and your heel base will fall apart. It didn't happen with these but I've seen other shoes where they've done that. So we're gonna replace them with leather stacked heel bases. Right now I'm just cutting off the threaded nails that we're holding the heel base on. There's four of them. We're gonna probably put close to like six or seven of them. And now we're just gonna cut the sole off. Be careful not to cut the uppers, but we're gonna replace the welts on these ones. And we're gonna do the welts a little bit differently than what I've done in the past. And I'll show you guys how I do that once we get to that point. But these boots are constructed with a hold fast construction. And I'll show you the difference between hold fast and what we call a gimming. Re gimming construction? I don't know what you want to call that, but basically a hold fast is a lot better construction compared to a hold fast. Or not a hold fast. Hold fast is better than a, using gimming. But you can't use a hold fast in. Well, not that you can't, but more um, production boots and shoes. It's harder to use a hold fast construction like this. You see it mainly in handmade boots. Alrighty. We got our leather, our shank cover. That was leather, so we're going to clean that up and reuse it. We got some pork here in the back. We got our shank. I'm just gonna clean up this pork. We gotta take the welt off. The welt gets nailed underneath the shoe with this pair. Sometimes they just stop right at the end. Sometimes they tuck it up underneath the sole. This one, they tucked up underneath the sole and nailed it here. So I'm gonna find which side the chain stitch starts because that would allow us to pull all the stitching out at one shot. Instead of having to cut each and every single one of them It's right here, so I can tell. We're gonna run some acetone right where that the welt stitching goes, just to loosen it up. We're going to pull the inside thread. Oh. 
it's kind of hard to show you guys this part, unfortunately. It looks like this one. I'm on the wrong side. Let me figure this out. There we go. Hopefully, I've got an issue right there. Like that, kind of where he walks past the sole. I'm going to have to figure out how to do something with that. He warned the belt stitching, which is no good. No good. All right, now you see him pulling the inside thread out. And that thread was holding the welt on, so now we should just be able to remove it. Remove this last little stitch. And then there goes the welt, so we gotta clean the stitching up. And then move on to the next step, tackling that issue right there. Hold fast, you got your leather footbed. This is the piece that you walk on. And then you got a channel carved along the edge and they raised it up to where this, the side of the, the boot can get stitched to that along with the welt. Now he kind of wore straight into that ridge right there. So we're gonna have to figure something out to go ahead and patch that place so that when we put the new welts on, it actually is secured to the footbed. Um, so we'll figure that out and I'll let you know what I come up with. So what I did was we took the, the footbed out and I sanded the sides. Then we took some gemming and we glued it to the side. And what that does is it just makes that ridge that we could sew the sides to and the welt to, um, just like it had the, the leather, the footbed. Since it was worn down, there's really nothing I can do to kind of salvage that. So we ended up having to just to sand the whole thing and then put the gemming on. That way his footbed doesn't change and he has the same um, shape because this has formed to his foot, so we want to keep that the same. So this is the difference between a hold fast and the gimming. This is now a gimming construction. Still good, but just not as good as the hold fast, but this is all we were really able to do. All right, so for the welt, instead of taking a strip like this and trying to bending it, bend it around the tip of that toe, which it always like, it curls up a lot and it doesn't sit flat, so you put the sole on and then it puts a lot of stress there at the toe. So what I did, took a leather midsole, which was a little thick, so we sanded it down, we took the shape of the sole out, and then we made our own welt. So that is gonna get stitched just like that around the shoe. And then that'll allow the front, it won't have so much stress at the front um, compared to that strip that they put on there. So, so we're gonna get it temporarily stitched into place and then just go ahead and stitch it. And I'm gonna do this stitch job, this stitch job. I'm gonna film me stitching for Welting Wednesday. So if you wanna watch me sew this on, Go check out my other video, Welting Wednesday, and how I stitched the Stingray boot on. It's just legit me sewing the welt on. So it takes about 30 minutes. Um, and this video is probably already going to be long, so I don't want to take any more time from this. So I'm going to take care of this, and then we'll be back when the welt is stitched on. So we got the new welts on, like we had explained. We got our shank, shank cover in. Got the cork in, so now it's time to put the sole on. Now remember, I know this is super wide, and I'm going to fix, once I get the sole on, we'll go ahead and trim that up. So we want to make sure we get it even. Actually, I'm gonna start from the 
from the back this time because the sole is going to barely fit the shoe. I use this. That's just a strap that we use to press down the sole. I haven't used it in a while. Now we're going to press the edges down, trim it, and get it ready to stitch. So after we nail the shank, nail the back groove, do a final trim, we're ready to stitch. We just did a little die job on the bottom. We got white thread on the bottom, black thread on top, but since we're stitching it upside down, the black thread will be on the sole and the white thread will be on the welt, just like it was originally. So, we're just gonna line everything up. Wish us luck. So we're gonna push this back just, just a tad. The white's not laying up anymore. All right, we're good to go. Like that, she be stitched. We'll go ahead and clean this up and be ready for the heels. You're ready for the heel bases to go on. We've got our new leather stacked heel base, the cowboy heel. I know it's wide, but we're gonna be able to shape it. Um, I like keeping it wide so we can shape it properly. Just gotta center everything up. Make sure it's all good. And then we're gonna tap it on. Now remember these heel bases customer come in, but we got it on and now we're gonna nail it to it. So what I did was I took the heel base and I did only two nails holding it to the leather heel base. Now we're just gonna go in and fill the rest of the holes so that it'll go into the heel base and actually grab into the leather sole. And then once we're done with that, we do a final shaping. We'll nail it again from the inside of the boot, securing everything together so it's nice and secure it's not going anywhere it's going to last for many many years without any issues i'm going to go and counter sink them There we are. I know it looks weird now, but we're gonna taper it just like this was tapered and do a final clean condition, dye the edges, and these are about ready. Unfortunately, sometimes when we go to clean and polish it, we get those white threads dirty a little bit. So all we do, take a little bit of 
acrylic paint and very carefully kind of recolor those threads. You gotta be careful not to get it on the welt. Or else you have to dye the welt again. It's just not a fun process. I'm just doing the tips of these ones. Because that's the only one that got, these are the only threads that got dirty. Oops, you see I got on the welt there. Just gotta wipe it off real quick. Now I gotta start over because I had to wipe the whole thing. Anyway, this takes a lot of patience and care. And I think just the front ones need to be done. clean it up and we'll show you guys I'll show you the finished product we are done with these beautiful stingrays stingray is known to have that little diamond section there basically we built these boots just like they were supposed to be from the manufacturer Full JR leather soles, nailed the shank, new leather heel bases instead of that paper that they used, and then a cowboy style heel. These have washers on the inside of the rubber, so that's when the nails go in, it kind of sucks it tight and holds it um, to the heel base itself. But these turned out super beautiful. If you guys don't know, don't remember what they used to look like. Go back to the beginning of the video. These things were pretty dang beat up. Uh, and that's, I think that's the one we painted the toe. Do I remember the stitching on it? I think, if I remember correctly. Or is it this one? I don't know, it's hard to tell. That's kind of what you want though. And then that little piece right there, that little diamond, I touched that up a little bit as well to brighten it up. Nothing too heavy, because Stingray doesn't really absorb the dye as much, but we put a little bit on there and made it look a lot better. So, let me show you these other ones. This is the same customer. I don't know exactly what skin this is, some sort of gator came in or something like that, but these ones got our JR Graffiti soles made by the same company that makes these just they have little green stampings on them these are pretty cool sold i only have a few of these left only have a few of these soles left these ones got cat's ball cowboy heels these are vintage they don't make these anymore so only got a few of these left and only got a few of these left I think after JR sold to Kilgore, I don't know if they're going to be making these anymore, but it'd be pretty cool if they did. So, if you guys want some great JR graffiti soles, hit me up as soon as possible because I only got a few pairs left. But back to the Stingrays, because these were the main event. Oh, I'm sorry. Last but this, I did a short, a little reel for them to take down and put back together. So want to see that that should be live about the same time this one is so but thank you guys for watching if you have any questions oh um one last thing i want to show you guys this is what i use to clean and condition the boots this is angelus leather cleaner and conditioner for reptile and exotic skins so stuff for stingrays the gators your snakes um any like shark skin, um, any of those exotic skins, use this to clean and condition them. Um, 
if you guys don't know where to get this, I'll put a link to my website down below where you can pick yourself up a bottle. And a little bit goes a long way, especially with these um, durable exotic skins like the Stingray and the Gators. Um, skins, more more delicate skins like snake skin. You might want to do a little bit more often, but yeah. Thank you guys for watching. That just about wraps up this video. I appreciate it. Uh, like and subscribe if you want to see more. And if you have any questions about a repair that you'd want to get done and mail on in, I'm in Smyrna, Tennessee, which is near Nashville, like 20 minutes. So if you're in the area, come by the shop. And if you're not in the area and you want to mail them in, go ahead and email me or give me a call or text or hit me up on Instagram. All the information will be down below. Y'all have a wonderful day. Thank you again, and God bless y'all.